What is the relationship between a research proposal and then the project that that research proposal gives way to if you receive funding, if you receive support? Counterintuitively, a fair amount, if not most of the writing that you do for a research proposal, and I don't just mean at the sort of college or honors thesis level, but I'm talking through PhD, I'm talking about the research proposals that I write on a regular basis, most, if not all of that writing ends up in one way, shape, or form, at least in an early draft of the project itself. And I think the reason for that is pretty self-evident, that if you're talking about how to convince a research fellowship committee to support your work, you have to tell them, you have to prepare them by giving them the historical framework or some, you know, the equipment to understand what your questions are. Well, if you think of that as part one of the research proposal, then all of that, now it's subject to revision, but all of that ends up in the introduction of a paper or a project or even a book or an article. And so it is preparatory, but you've been writing this whole time, it turns out. It's not that this is just to get the money and then you start from scratch. It's that a fair amount, if not all of what you've written, um, will end up in the first draft. So basically, the, the equipment that you give to the research fellowship committee ends up in the introduction of one's work. And of course, to get funding for your work, you need to tell them or give them a sense of the kinds of questions that you are planning to ask of whatever your source materials are going to be, whether they be documentary materials, like archival materials or ethnographic. And of course, in, a, in an article or a book, you also need to, to prepare your reader to understand what your questions are going to be. So most of, if, if that's section two of a research proposal, most, if not all of that ends up in the introduction of an article or a book as well. And in addition, the questions that you outline in this part two are also in part or in full, the very questions that your paper, your article, your book will attempt to answer. So the questions kind of show up in two different places in the migration from the proposal to the actual project, and that is to introduce them and then to try to answer them. And if you think about the third section of, a, you know, kind of a classic research proposal structure of trying to, trying to help the fellowship committee understand the ramifications, the potential ramifications of your research if they, if they support it. Well, that exploration of significance shows up again in the conclusion of an article or a project or a paper or a thesis or a book, as well as kind of peppered throughout, because at, at not at every sentence or at every paragraph, but you you want to be regularly explaining to your readers in a, in a paper that is in an article, what is the significance of the evidence and the argument and the answers that I've just given you? Yes, I've answered some of my questions, but what is the broader significance to having answered them? So all of that significant stuff also gets reused. And if you think about part four of a classic research proposal, which tells the committee, listen, if you give me money, this is specifically what I'm going to do. Well, that not only is are those the materials that you will actually read and think with, um, there'll be a portion of them, but they that is the preparation for your footnotes and your bibliography. So basically, 100% of a research proposal, plus minus, maybe not plus, but minus some, uh, ends up in the final project. It's just that it is sort of reallocated. And then, of course, there's revision and expansion. You'll find more sources. You'll decide to refine your questions. You'll discover new questions. And, and deeper levels of significance will occur to you as you're setting about the work of actually trying to answer some of the questions that you've identified. And so there really is a direct connection uh, in ways that maybe aren't as true in other fields between a research proposal and a final project. The blueprints of a building... Uh, don't actually end up, you know, the blueprints are the blueprints, the building is the building, you know, the, a sketch of, a sketch of a, I don't know, uh, you know, a, a painting is, is, is distinct from the painting. There is some sort of, you know, that's all preparation, pre-production, but interestingly, at least in research, um, 
you're actually using the language that you've written in the proposal. And therefore, you are already well on your way, 60, 70, 80% along the way uh, of, 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 uh, of your project if you've really done the hard work on your research proposal. And that's what makes it magical. Because you just sort of wake up one day and you're like, wow, I actually did all this work already and I didn't even realize it.